Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're gonna be learning how to scroll textures in GameMaker by using shaders. Before we get into the tutorial, I wanted to make a quick plug about a program called Asprite. When it comes to dealing with repeating textures, in Asprite, we have the ability to enable tile mode. If we go up to the view menu, click on tile mode, we can choose how we want to view it. We can either tile on the horizontal plane, or we can also tile on the vertical plane, and even we can tile on both. Using a program like this can easily tell us if our sprite's going to look correctly as we're trying to repeat the texture. So again, I'm just throwing in a plug and I highly recommend Asprite for any kind of pixel art work. But for now, we're gonna close Asprite and we're gonna switch over to GameMaker. We're actually gonna be using GameMaker to do everything from this tutorial from scratch. Now let's get things started by creating two sprites. We're going to be using a static background so in this sprite, let's choose a color for our background, and I'm going to go with a blue color. Now we'll create another sprite, and for this one, this is going to be our scrolling texture. I'm going to name this SPR Arrow. Now to draw our arrow, we're going to need to find the center. I'm going to choose a nice color, and then using the line tool, I'll simply draw an X on my sprite. Now with the tools that are provided, I can move this X over to the side. Now let's copy and paste our X, and finally let's merge it down so that our layers are flattened. Now we're able to get the fill tool and we can fill it in with our favorite color. The final thing that I'm going to do is just move this back a little bit. Now I do know that just because it's an arrow, this is going to scroll on the horizontal plane, no problem. So let's close this and create a new object. This object will name object arrow. Let's assign it the arrow sprite into this object so we can go into the room editor and we can view it. Inside the room editor, let's actually place a few of these objects. For one of them, we'll change the scale and we'll also rotate it. Now, when we draw the arrow, we also wanna draw both the static background and the arrow itself. So for the object, let's add a draw event to override the system. First, we're going to need to draw the background using a draw sprite extended. We'll pass in our sprite, which is SPR back. Next is the subframe, and since our sprite isn't using animation, we'll just use the number zero. After that, we have the X and Y position, the image X scale, image Y scale, our image angle, we'll keep C white for the color, and then finally, we'll use the image alpha. Now with the background done, we can copy and paste this line down below. Let's change the sprite to reference our arrow sprite and we'll keep everything else the same. Let's run our game to make sure that our drawing is happening correctly. When we run the game, we should see the background and the arrow at the same time. And that looks perfect. So let's close the game and create a new shader file. For this shader file, I'm going to name it sh underscore scroll texture. For this shader file, we're going to be ignoring the vertex shader and focus on the fragment shader. For this particular shader, all we're going to be doing is changing the texture coordinates. We're going to use variables to determine how much we want to scroll on the X and Y axis. So let's create two uniform variables for this. We'll call them U scroll X and U scroll Y. We also need to ensure that they're going to be a type of float because we want to pass in decimals. Now with the variables all done, we need to change the texture coordinates. This is actually a vector two, but what we need to do is extract it to the X and Y components. Let's change the line to be something like this. We'll have a new vector two, and we'll pass in the texture coordinate X and texture coordinate Y. Now, all we have to do is apply our individual scroll values to the X and Y coordinates. Once we're done that, we have to actually get these variables into the shader. So let's switch over to the object. There is a few different things that we can do here. We could add a create event and then add the handles to grab the shader information and that would keep everything in memory and optimize. Or we can actually just add it to the draw event ourselves. I'm not too worried about optimization right now, so I'm just going to add everything in the draw event but I do want to also throw a new plugin for a library called Shade. 
You can find it in the description below and it will take care of creating and managing the handles in the background. It's a really neat library that I cannot recommend enough when you're dealing with shaders. So since we are doing everything from scratch, inside the create event, we still need a few variables. First, we need to keep track of the position X and position Y of the UV coordinates. We'll call them position X scroll and position Y scroll. We also need to keep track of the speed for the X and Y axis. Let's call these two new variables speed X scroll and speed Y scroll. This is actually going to be how fast our texture is going to scroll on the horizontal or vertical plane. Now remember, when we're dealing with UV coordinates, everything is between zero and one. So we need to use a much smaller number than usual. I'm gonna change the X scroll to something like 0.05. For the Y scroll, I'm just gonna keep it at zero. Now let's add a step event, and in the step event, we'll increase our variables. So that means we'll take our position X scroll and we'll add the speed to it. Again, we can copy and paste it, and we'll do the same with the Y components. Last but not least, we need to pass these variables into the shader. So inside the draw event, we only want to draw with the arrow. So our shader is going to leave the background outside of this. So underneath the background, we'll start off with a shader set function. We need to pass in the shader that we want to set, and in our case, it's going to be the scroll texture. This will tell GameMaker that everything underneath here, we want to draw with this current shader. Now we don't want to forget to reset it, so at the end here, we'll use a shader reset function so that GameMaker will use the default shader. Now to set the variables, first we need to call a shader set uniform F function. This function will normally take a handle or a pointer but since we didn't set one up here, we're going to sneak in a shader get uniform function. In this function, we need to pass in the shader that we want to access. Then the next portion is going to be the variable from the shader. So in our case, that's going to be u underscore scroll underscore x. We'll copy and paste it below and change the x component to a y component. Now the second parameter of the original shader set uniform function is going to be the variable or the value itself. So in our case, we need to pass in the position X scroll and position Y scroll. Now let's run our game and see how things are looking. You can see it actually scrolled extremely quickly and then stopped. So there are a few things that we need to fix. First, we'll go back to the create event and we'll make the speed X scroll something much lower, like 0.001. Now let's run our game again. You can see that our texture is scrolling. However, it just doesn't look right. There's a blue line that is corresponding to our background that looks like it's drawing over the texture and it's definitely not being repeated. So let's close the game and open up the SPR arrow sprite. We're going to go over to the texture settings and find the option for separate texture page. This will ensure that only our arrow is on this texture page, so we won't have other textures such as our background overlapping it. Let's close the sprite and run the game one more time. You can see that now it has fixed the blue lines, but it's still not repeating, so we need to close the game and switch back to the draw event. Before we draw the sprite, we need to use a function called GPU set text repeat which will tell GameMaker to repeat the texture that we're using. Once we're done drawing the sprite, we need to use that function again and pass in a false parameter so that we can tell GameMaker to stop using the repeat texture. Let's also go into the create event and speed up our scrolling. Let's change the 0.001 to something like 0.01. .01. Now let's run our game again and see what we have. Hopefully, if you've been following along, you can see that the texture is scrolling properly and it is being repeated. There is one thing that bugs me, and that is that we are adding a positive number to the texture. So to keep it the same with GameMaker, when we add anything, I think it should be moving to the right. We'll close our game and head back over to the shader. All we need to do is switch our addition sign to a subtraction sign. You can do the same with the Y scroll, but for this video, I'm only using the X position, so I'm just going to make that change. 
Now, if we run our game again, in my mind, it actually looks correct. Now, the one thing that I did want to prove is that we are only scrolling the arrow. So let's open up the background sprite and add a few little dots to the sprite. Now, when we run our game again, you can see that the arrow is the only portion that's moving and the background is indeed static. So it's not moving at all. And that's it. That's all we need to use a shader to create a repeatable texture. You can use this effect for a bunch of other things, such as water, movable platforms, chains, and more. I want to thank you for watching the video, and a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon in no particular order. Sean, Game Maker Community, Helna, 39 Digits, Mika, Matthew, Patrick, Midnight, Thomas, Aldo, Emerald, Jujub84, Victor, and Sabikai. Once again, thank you all for watching the video. Please check out my Patreon page for links that are found in the description and more great tutorials, libraries, or plugins. If you're currently working on a game and you want it showcased here, just reach out to me on Discord and I'm sure we can make it happen. Again, thank you all for the support and thanks for watching.